against a brother and a sister, there is always the opportunity to come together and say, I apologize without reservation for my mistake. It doesn't mean that they have to forgive you, and if it's a difficult one, they may take time to forgive you. But the divine forgives us, always has forgiven us, but forgives us when we are willing to step forward. And that's perfect remedy. You know, there is not some permanent record for eternity that says because you picked your nose when you're five years old, you know, you're condemned. That, that, that's a system created, and I'm sorry after, you know, my explanation of the word parasite, but I hope it's, it's clear. That's the kind of mad mind that creates us to think that once we do make a mistake, it can't be, can't be fixed. And I, and I really hate a system that kind of makes that mockery of remedy. Remedy is always available. Yeah, thanks. Great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, could you straighten up the concept of person and uh, why person is used in one heaven uh, as opposed to what, what it actually means in the legal uh, dictionary meaning it's, or actually even in Latin, the persona, character, uh, affection. Sure. Why is it used in one heaven? Could you clear that up a little bit? Sure. Look, not not every concept that the system uses, or in fact even the system invented, is inherently evil. The concept of a trust, albeit skewed, is not an, not an evil concept. It's just used for evil purpose. The same with a person. When you were born, you were not born on your flesh and printed a name. You weren't. A name is a form. A name is a fiction. So the use of the word persona, actor, form, fiction, is a perfectly reasonable concept if used in a logical form of law that is not using uh, corruption. So one of the things that we learned, and this gives an example of how we've evolved, we initially saw person as something evil, something part of the existing system to be avoided. So we were using men, women, and, and other things. And in fact, some of the codes were changed away from person to men and women for that very reason, and they, they've, they've become less effective. So we're probably going to update them now back to person. But what we discovered is if you give up the concept of a fiction, given that the whole world is fiction, given that a name is a fiction assigned to us, then you're actually walking off the battlefield and giving them an enormous advantage because you're depriving yourself of tools that make law more effective in that it allows you to identify relationships and fictions that are necessary in a, is the way the world, you know, the modern world operates. And I'll give an example. Property. Property is a relatively modern concept. It is a legal fiction, and it is simply nothing more than right of use. Yet property has been a major contribution to stabilizing the kind of war over assets that plagued the world, where you had one town and one castle sieging another town and plund you know, plundering things and building walls. You know, property effectively rendered parapets and, 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 and fortresses inert because people respected that there was a way to define right of use and, and it didn't require you to physically hold everything. So person is no different to that. It's just that we've seen it as purely Roman and it's not and we've, and we've, we've given it up and said, well, you can have that, which we now contest. Like title, we contest title. So in UK there we say that there is a divine person created uh, with the divine trust and the Roman system can't touch that. So what we're doing is we're taking their concepts, we're strengthening them and we're using them against them. That's what we're doing with person. Very good, Frank. Thank you. So then basically the name or what we're called is also considered a uh, property or the highest right of use. Absolutely. Now if we're going to if we're going to, to permanently end 
these people from coming back and corrupting the worlds that our grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren inherit. We've got to come up with a system that is bulletproof. And that's why we're using these tools, so that when we create a divine trust, no one can usurp your rights. No one. That's what we're doing. Very good. All right, now if a registrar dishonors the EDP, uh, what is the next step or next procedure to the, to the registrar of your state? Well, you just follow through the steps. I mean, you, you do the EDP, and if it's dishonored, you follow up with a dishonor. If they send you some funny letter or they deviate from the process, you've got the biggest lies of the registrar. If you go through the four deeds and they still dishonor, then you move to a great writ. So there is a, a step process there. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have the great writ element of it perfected over the next week. Great. I think that's a pretty Fine. good way to wrap it up. Frank, uh, how about you? Well, yeah, I agree. And, and Terry, I, I, look, thank you so much. I know there was technical difficulties to start the call. I really appreciate all those that have come on and asked questions. And if I missed a question, I'm sorry, please um, let us know or add them to the forum and try and answer them. But uh, thanks again for everyone. Thank you, Terry, for what you've done as a host. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Frank, for joining everyone. And thank you for the extended time tonight. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we'll be back next week. Uh, Frank, you on for next week? Yes, I'll be here. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So we'll be back on next week, Talk to you, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, come and join us again and bring more folks with you. Uh, with that, I think it's a wrap for tonight, Frank. Thank you again. Thank you, everyone. Good on you. Thanks, everyone. Bless. Good night. Good. Have a good day, Frank.